Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Looks good to me. Fire and ready. Hey, people, here, is, here we are, and coming to you, surprise, I'm at home today. That's because Justin is not feeling well, so he asked me if we could uh, kind of do the, the him, is, him at home and me at home thing. And actually, with all the coronavirus stuff, maybe, maybe we'll do more of this in the coming weeks. We shall see. So we're at home today, and it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day, as you can see from the huge uh, blank uh, spot of bright light back here with my basil plant in it. Um, hi everybody. Hey Robin and Corinico and Anki and Jedi Jared and Iffy. Hello. So yeah, we're gonna do special stuff today. I decided I was in a freehand mood. Uh, so we are going to do that. Um, I'm actually going to set up some kind of pseudo Celtic Dwarvish knot work, um, on this giant, uh, on the Cape. So rain, freezing rain, then snow. Ooh, Robin, that stinks. Oh, we've got a sub, Justin. Write down another sub. We only that. need eight more. Eight more, no, right? No, or seven? Malin actually got them yesterday, remember? Oh, right. Okay, let me make a note right away. Just so I remember to AMA schedule. And that might be a good thing to do if we do end up, if you end up being sick and we end up having to do more stuff from home. Because I can look up the questions on the Discord. Awesome. All right. Yay. So now that means that that sub adds toward our next goal, right, Justin? Uh, yes. Yes. So second, we make a second little note. Start our account again. Morning, Sentimental. Morning, Christodoma. Uh, our sub stretch goal, not bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> ah. Yep. Working on our second AMA. Yes, exactly. Uh, since I'm limited to about an hour. So hey, peeps. Hi, Quindy. Good morning. Uh, Kazmania, he's, he's not necessarily off. We're still negotiating. We're seeing if maybe we can do the afternoon stream. And Justin is, is uh, working from home, and I am working from home right now. So this is the great thing about technology, right? So he can run the stream from his end, and I can run my stream from my end, and we can make sure you guys get streams, even if everybody shuts down because of coronavirus. Wee! So yay. Yes. So Justin may or may not be taking the day off. It has yet, it has yet to be uh, discussed. But at least this morning, he can get a little bit of extra sleep after we do this, this stream. Which yeah, is awesome. I'm, I'm altering the title now, Riot. Oh, okay. Yeah, give him a break. The poor man is, is feeling like a truck ran him over. We don't know what size of truck. Is, this, is it an 18-wheeler, Justin, this morning? Oh, uh, no, more like a, like a Ford Ranger. Oh, Ford Ranger. Oh, that's a tiny truck. That's hardly that's a, a truck. Isn't that a, a car truck. chassis? Basically, yes. <laughs> Uh, I know Daryl used to own a, a Ranger, and so did Bono, so we always tease them about their tiny car trucks. Yes, exactly. I feel great, so at least at least I'm perky. Although apparently everybody in the paint department is getting sick. So whatever it is, whatever viral crap is going around, uh, Reaper is getting hit by it. I know, didn't they lose some people in internet too, Justin? 
I like last couple no days. No. Um, yes, even sick we can't do without Justin. It's true. Hey, Martin Thunder, how are you doing? Sir Roberts, nice to see you. Ah, but I'm not leaving. In fact, uh, it appears more more has developed along that, but it appears I will still be a Reaper employee. Um, at first, I thought I was just going to go freelance, uh, but uh, Reaper uh, very generously offered to keep me on payroll, and I'll get paid per show and stuff like that, but I still get to be a Reaper person. Isn't that awesome, guys? Reaper is so awesome. Like, working for Reaper is like working for, like, a really awesome family. Well, a stay, right? I'm still moving. <laughs> I just get to actually stay as an employee. <laughs> But yes, isn't that nice of them? Reaper is fantastic. So just, if you aren't already spreading the word that Reaper is a fantastic company, you can continue to spread the word that Reaper is a fantastic company even more than you were. Also, so, yeah. to, uh, to clarify, I, I, uh, I am sick, but it's not so bad that I can't stream. So we're, uh, we're, we're still doing fine. I don't want people worried that I'm actually contracting coronavirus. Yes. Also, we're not supposed to say corona on stream. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Well, YouTube is demonetizing people for it, so oh. I don't think Twitch is doing anything, doing anything about it because it's not, you know, we're not fear mongering, right? We're just, oh, I see what you. So just, essentially, people going for extra views by putting up uh, clickbaity uh, Corona cor things. Correct. Oh, because people are people suck. You know that. Sometimes. I completely agree. I'm trying to monetize this crap. Yeah, I don't blame YouTube because I know how clickbait goes on YouTube. So, uh, it's terrible. Human malware. I like that actually, Rathmore. That's great. Yeah, I've got a little bit of human human mal. Yeah, Twisted Oma. I mean, I still get paid per show, just like I'm a freelancer. Um, but uh, they made me a very nice offer, so it's very cool. Reaper is very cool. This is the bottom line you should walk away from with, rather. Sorry, it's early and I've had one cup of tea. <laughs> but yeah, I still get to do all my freelancy stuff and still, essentially, I'll be working part-time for Reaper. So it's good. It's good stuff. All right. I think we're going to switch over. I've been trying to wait. It's, it's humid here. It's gotten uh, warmer, but it's also humid. So my paint is taking forever to dry, but I think it's dry enough uh, now to go. So I'm going to go over to my cam. Oh, let me, let me disable my intro first. Otherwise we're going to get the, the splooge paint again. Um, here we go. Yay. All right. So when you're doing freehand borders. Now, those of you, um, there may be some of you who saw one of my first ever Patreon things where I did a freehand border. It's very, very, very simple though. Um, and here we are going to actually do more of a knot work thing. When you're working on a small model, like if I was doing this on Malcolm here, and you can see then the scale of the frost giant uh, ranger next to Sir Malcolm, who is a Templar. I still think that's a miniature elk. Don't you think so, Justin? Justin? I think it's a miniature elk. Pretty uh, sure. Maybe the yeah. giants are like, you know, breeding miniature elk for food. Don't you think? I think. Yeah, scale wise, I agree. Yeah, because that that's like a German smaller. shepherd. Yeah, that's like a German shepherd sized elk, which is a tiny elk. I bet they're, I bet they're terribly cute, though. So. <laughs> I, I would have a pet elk. <laughs> you would have a pet elk. <laughs> They'd be very tasty eventually. Oh, sorry. I like venison. Uh, oh, no, it's, it's tasty. Yeah, Quindy, isn't it silly? It's like, and yet it's not silly. No, you know that? That's the problem with this virus is that, uh, is that, you know, you have to kind of worry. You feel silly worrying because you feel, you feel like people are blowing this out of proportion. But at the same time, so many people have elderly relatives that they're either like living with, like Sadie, or working with, you know, or, or being around. And that's where the real danger population is, right? So, so you have to take it seriously because it may not be risky for like those of us who are younger, but it could be risky for those of us who are older. So, so Which it's actually like, is uh, poignant, and I'm glad you brought that up because Sadie's show is canceled. Yeah, Sadie's show is canceled because she lives with her grandparents, both of whom are have a lot of health issues and are immune compromised. Sadie really cannot afford to bring any illness, any illness home. Um, so yeah, so Sadie's show is canceled because she, unlike me, she doesn't have the setup to stream remotely. So she's going to be painting platinum is going to be called off. Yeah. Yeah. Rathmore. It's, it's hard though. Right. Cause it's, it's an invisible thing. It's, and you, and I swear, you know, they see a case like we have a case in Frisco, which is about what half an hour from here, Justin, 
You know, and, we have about seven cases now, I believe. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, you know that people were in Frisco and, you know, may have picked it up and you just don't know. You know, it's like, uh, it's just, it can spread invisibly. So I don't blame, you know, people for being alarmed. Uh, oh, really, Martin Thunder? That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta, it, it makes sense to take common sense precautions, right? And I don't know that there's much we can do beyond that. I mean, being extreme about it doesn't make sense. Although, uh, David, um, Google just told uh, their employees to all stay home and work from home, which uh, happily, Google, since it's mostly IT um, and projects they can actually take home on their work laptops, they can do that. So... Alrighty, let's see here. So we're going to start up here. We're going to do kind of a dwarfy network, I think. So essentially figure out how far from the border you want to be and start your design. And I'm going to do kind of a, with a small model, you want to maybe only do a single or a double strand. With this model, I could probably go into a triple strand if I was really fine brushwork. Um, so yeah. So let's see here. Um, I actually sketched this out earlier. I can actually show you what I'm going to do. Let's see here. Get out of the way, Malcolm. You're in the way. All right, so, and you can always draw this out. You should sketch it out on a piece of paper to make sure it works. So you've got a, a dash here, and then I'm gonna come up into a triangle because dwarfy and uh, frost gianty patterns tend to be very angular. So let's just do a diamond. We essentially say we're gonna do a diamond up here. And that's going to be one strand. And that's one effort. Now, to make it more of a Celtic knotwork, though, you want, and you have to kind of choose, like I'm kind of between second strand coming in and a second diamond, or at least half of a diamond. So we could do that. And the key to the knotwork is making one side of this go under the strand. So let's say, let's block this in so it becomes evident. And one side go over. So say, because you're, you're trying to make the effect is kind of a woven effect. So one side should go underneath this strand and the other side should go over this strand. So that's kind of what we're looking at doing on this. And that's very simple. That's probably the simplest you could do Something like this would work on a 28 millimeter. You'd have to do it fairly large, probably. Um, the other uh, design, I, I thought about also kind of taking this even a little bit out of range. And instead of going and doing parallel bands, of actually taking this down under and then back up instead. But that would really get close to the border here of the cloak. And so I'm probably going to do just the double strands instead of the big V. Um, do, 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 just checking to see if you guys have any questions or if we're still talking about stuff. Yeah, you're lucky, Rathmore, that you can do that, that you can work from home. I can work from home at this point, mostly. Yeah, actually, if I took model some, I could totally work from home. So, yeah. Oh, thank you for the raid, Wolfraith. Oh, thanks, Wolfraith. Yay! Hi, everybody. I'm Anne. I'm Reaper Miniature, staff painter and paint line designer. And I'm a little stiffly this morning, apparently. Allergies kicking in. Um... And we're doing some knot work today, a border on this uh, Frost Giant, um, Frost Giant Ranger, who is a Bones model from Bones 4 that was released shortly ago. And uh, Justin has the number, I think she is... 44124. Yeah, that. What he said. All right, so let's see. And I always block this in with like brown liner or walnut, guys. Um... And you can make it pretty thin. You don't need it really thick out the gate. You do want it to be pretty solid by the time you go to actually fill it in. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Kaz. Good morning, Daffodweer. Morning, Grey Paladin. Morning, 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 everybody. All right. So let's get into sketching this out. So I'm going to use a real thin brush, obviously. I'm using my uh, Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 uh, size 1 because I can do a real fine line with it. And I need to do this diamond shape that comes down and then goes off to the side in a tail. And then second, I'm gonna add my other line. So let's see here. 
So we want our line to come in. Then we're going to go up. And we might lose part of it up here. That's fine. And this is also where we decide how thick we want it to be, right? So let's see here. See where I'm mapping it in there. And I may decide, if I decide that this is not big enough and I need it more bold, I can do that. I'm going to leave a fair amount of space between diamonds because I've still got this other line that I'm introducing. So now, and I may have actually made my diamond a little too squat here. I may need to actually bring it up a little further. And you want to have your base coat color around for this, obviously, because then you can adjust, right? So if I decide that I need more room here, I can actually block out that line, kind of trim this down. And I do a lot of this. Like when you're doing an intricate freehand pattern, be ready to adjust. You, you're not going to get it right in one go. It's just keep all your colors open so that you can thin down lines, thicken lines, you know, you're going to be working with it a bit. Don't worry about it. All of us have to kind of correct ourselves. This is why I like to just sketch it in first. There we go. Now we have a little bit more room, which means I probably have to drop this one a little closer, but that's fine. I was going to thicken it up anyway. All right. So, and you want to thicken, you don't want this line to be really thin because actually, haha, you're going to color it in later. So you want it to be a little thicker. So a bigger pattern works just fine. If you want to go bigger than I am doing here, both because you feel like you don't have the brush control to go smaller, bigger is just easier for you, go bigger. And then I'm going to bring in a secondary strand. This might be too tiny. I don't know. We're going to see. All right. So that might be too small. Let's see here. Once I trim it up, my concern is that I want the interior of the pattern to be gold. So I need to leave enough room. These lines need to be thick enough for that to work. So actually right here, I'm going to take this down and I'm going to make a bigger, a much bigger triangle or diamond and see if that works a little better. And then I can go back and buff this guy out. It's not a big deal. So let's go up, make it much taller. There we go. A gigantic diamond. Let's see how this works. Giganto diamond. Oh, I got a little bit too rectangular there. See it? So when you bring this down, if it crosses there, we need it to actually cross here. So I went a little bit too deep with that one. I think that should be your new uh, slogan or catchphrase for your Patreon. Oh? Go, go big or go home. <laughs> Paint big or go home. There we go. Even right. better. Yeah. So, so as we sketch this out, we're experimenting. And that's also why I only put a base coat on the cape to start with, guys. Um, like, I want to sketch at least the first parts of this out. Because I know I'm going to be touching up a lot. So usually what I would do is I would sketch this out until I had the size right and the spacing right up here in this area. Then I'd go through and I'd highlight and shade the cloak. Then I would continue all my little freehand bits. Usually after you've highlighted and shaded, as long as your colors are still open, you can still adjust enough. Um, if you like kind of mess up a little area, you just can't redraw it, you know, um, if you've already done your highlight and shading. And it gets a lot harder because if you're redrawing the whole thing, you're probably going to um, lose a lot of underlying highlights and shading. And trying to do highlights and shading around freehand is, um, we don't do it. We don't do it. It makes us very angry as painters. And we're trying to relax and get in our zone as painters. So we do not want to be angsty about anything. All right, so I can thicken these lines up a lot better because I made them bigger. So I'm gonna add in my uh, secondary little line here. Go up, go down, and I'm not worrying about over or under yet. I'm gonna set that up in a moment. Okay, and now I'm gonna test if these lines are thick enough for me to fill in with, say, gold. And you can do metallic for that, like if, if you think it's like gold thread or brass wire, which a lot of the Vikings used to do actually is they would take really fine metal wire and just pretty much weave it through the cloth for designs. Um, they think that that was more a thing than embroidery was, even though other areas of the world had a lot of embroidery. 
No, Matt, it's not as hard as you think it is. Um, because in reality, you don't need to adjust too much. Uh, as long as you're close, the eye is going to totally pick up the pattern. It's going to see it and it's going to look right. So really, it's just imagining. And here, this is a good cloak for it because uh, it's not like seriously folded over. Like you could follow the folds. You can see them. And if you're doing dark shading in here, you really only need the pattern to come out here. You don't need to paint the pattern down into the shadow. Um, you just need to suggest that the lines are kind of going down there and the human eye will do the rest for you. Uh, so it's not as hard as you think. You could, if you wanted to, just do the diamonds and don't do the secondary weave part. That is up to you. But the same advice of drawing it out in one area first and kind of seeing how it works. Now I'm going to actually see if I can put a line of white down the center of each of these because if I want it to be gold, uh, if I'm doing NMM gold, which I typically do with freehand, because if you're doing fine freehand, you can use metallics, but it's going to look a lot sharper if you don't. So now we've got to worry about what's over and what's under. So I'll refer to my little drawing and I'll see that I want that one to go under and this one to go over. And I'm using really thin white. It's probably two to one paint to water. I need it to be solid enough that I can draw this and have it um, have it cover the, over the walnut. And the reason I would use walnut instead of brown liner for my underpainting, by the way, is that walnut covers really well even when thinned, whereas the liners are made to go a little more transparent when thinned so that they make good washes and they also can be tuned as far as if you want them really strong or weak when you're lining. Some people don't want a big bold line. So uh, here and there I'm losing a little bit of my walnut around the sides of this, but that's fine. I can, I can touch it up. Let's see. So we went over, we went under, over. So that means this one should go under. Boop. So it's best if you're going to start trying to do stuff like not work. If you kind of start with a simple, <laughs> simple um, two line pattern, because that'll let you learn to kind of think in overs and unders um, to see, because both of the, if you look at it, both of these strands on this side are going under and then both of the strands of this side are going older, over. So that's what makes the pattern of a weave. So let's see here. I'm going to put that up so you guys can see it. Yeah, Brackert, welcome. Yeah, notice, notice, uh, yeah, no one will notice if it's a little off sentimental minis. You are absolutely correct. Uh, it's going to look impressive enough that even little blorfs aren't really going to be noticed unless you've got somebody like super high end picking apart your freehand. Um, but it's, uh, it's easier than you think. And I mostly have preserved my dark line around the edge. Now, why do I want to leave this dark line around the edge? Well, it's going to make the pattern stand out more if I leave it there. Um, if I tried to just do this on in gold, it would be difficult to make the pattern stand out. But if I put down the dark line first and then fill it in with the gold, with putting down white first, um, you can see the pattern a lot better because it's outlined. And uh, that kind of like implies also that this is woven on top of the cloth because it gives you a little bit of shadow. Yeah, so dude, there we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, garbage. Uh, you can, you can let your OCD take over. I mean, if, if it's, as long as it doesn't make you stop, like that's the thing is all of us are, <laughs> miniature painters are anal, perfectionistic, and detail oriented. We all are somewhat OCD. But the key here is that you can't let your OCD make you stop because it's not perfect. That is where, that's the doom. You'll never finish anything. So be conscious of that and work through it. Um, take a breather, take a break, come back to it. Often I'll think at the end of the night, if I'm painting late, I will stop because I think it just sucks. And then I'll sleep on it and come back to it in the morning and it doesn't suck anymore. So if you really feel like your OCD is just jumping up and down on your head and it's terrible, do sleep on it and then come and look at it in the morning. And chances are in the morning, you're going to be like, oh, this doesn't look bad at all. And there's actually a biological cause for that. It's, uh, 
humans tend to hit kind of a uh, be brighter and op more optimistic earlier in the day. And, and I, that applies even to you night owls. For you, early in the day, maybe 1 p.m. But, uh, but in, in the time after you wake up on your natural cycle, you are more inclined to be optimistic and positive, whereas later in the afternoon, you hit a dip where you're much more pessimistic and negative. So if you know that and you can work around it, that's useful to you because then you should always keep in mind that later in the day, you're probably going to be just naturally more pessimistic and you should give it a chance. You shouldn't chuck the mini or paint over what you've done. You should look at it the next day. Oh, I got a little heavy on that dark line. We'll have to paint that back in. Yeah, so you should paint when you have your coffee, Nomadzik. Or wait, you should look at the work that you did yesterday when you have your coffee. So in the morning, after you get your caffeine, take a look at the mini that you painted the night before that you thought was so bad, and I'm betting that's going to be just fine. Or it'll be something you can work with at the very, very least. Hey, Rathmore, after my divorce, I got very much into self-help, and it helped me a lot. So I actually do a lot of reading about optimizing time also, because obviously I'm you know, at least partially a freelancer now with the Patreon, and, with, uh, and I'm soon to be a very much a freelancer. And the biggest help you can give yourself when you are doing any work on the side of your regular work is to optimize your time and get very productive. So I've been studying how to influence my own productivity and what the best times are for doing various things. Um, and little tips like that whole, you know, we tend to be pessimistic in the afternoon. So, you know, when I'm writing or if I'm working on a commission and I'm like at the end of the night, and this has happened more times than I can even uh, tell you. But if I, I'll be really pessimistic at the end of the night or I'll shoot a video late and I'll be like, oh my God, that sucked. Um, and then I go back to it the next morning, it's just fine. Yeah. Um, read a book called When, uh, Garmage. There's a book out there called, and it's When, and then there's a subtitle. Um, I'm, I'm listening to it on audiobook, but it's all about the studies that have been done about human productivity and time of day. And it's like shocking. Like kids, they did a study, I think it was in the, it was one of the European countries. It may have been the Netherlands or Sweden. I think it was Sweden where they had students take standardized tests uh, early in the day and then uh, in the afternoon. And the students in the afternoon had like strikingly lower test scores across the board. Like at that point, it's like, okay, everybody should take their standardized tests in the afternoon. But of course, uh, you know, schools don't really control for that. All right, we're gonna continue our pattern here. I'm just gonna do a couple of these since, you know, we've got a relatively short stream. And I'm what I'm probably gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna continue this tomorrow and show you how I do the fill-in. And the other thing that I'm going to do uh, for you is uh, I'm gonna actually do a PDF for my Patreon on this where I can sh uh, do it step-by-step. -step. So for those of you who are on my Patreon, I'll do it for the $2 level, it'll be the cheap one. Um, but I'll do a PDF that shows you how I'm doing these, lays it out step-by-step -step, uh, with photographs. So that way you can also have a PDF to refer to. So if you're not on my Patreon, feel free to sign up for, if you want the PDF, um, it'll probably be a couple days. I have to do it and take in progress photographs. Um, I'm a little late this month on my Patreon stuff anyway, because of all the packing that I'm having to do for moving, which has kind of uh, made timing difficult. But yeah. So here we go. So there's where you're going again. And these are off, like this is far more rectangular if I look at it, and this one is more square. But when I'm done with it, nobody's gonna notice that. <laughs> like, cause there's a fold here that's kind of distorting uh, everything, you know, and I've gotta, gotta go back and fix this little guy. Um, but it's really not gonna make much of a difference in just a casual look. Oh yeah, Garmage. I, I love this stuff too, just because it helps so much um, with, you know, just making a better work, work uh, process for me. Oh, there we go. There's Darth Abacus Bot with my Patreon link. It'll be patreon.com slash painting big. So yeah, in a couple days, uh, the, I should have the PDF up on how to do this on the $2 level. And I'll probably also show you a more complicated design 
how you can kind of like bring it up even more if you add a third <laughs> a third strand. Everybody's like, oh my God, Anne, never. Um, but I mean, obviously this is something you can do on a bust. Uh, obviously if there's, if there's fabric that's, uh, busts are allow you to get big with this sort of design and make it a lot, uh, simpler. So, all right. So we've got our second mapped out. Hey, Zambies. Hey there, planner and melon. Uh, yeah. Anne's Patreon seems to work and not work. Like it didn't work that time, Millen. After you, after you hit it, <laughs> the spoon. Is that what you smack people with, Millen? I thought I caught that the other day. Uh, magnetic Gumby. I can, can essentially. I mean, all I'm gonna do is pretty much go down here, probably do a, a diamond to to carry the pattern on, and then you just go right up to the line and then you stop, and then you kind of make a guesstimate as to where, like, how far in it'll go. I mean, here, the fold of the cape, really, it goes all the way down and up. Like, there's no, you don't lose any cloth here. So I'll probably shade it out, like, in the shadow, but just pretty much keep going. Um, if you had, if this actually, like, curled down and around, it was totally hidden, then you just pretty much, uh, you look at my earlier PDF on how I do freehand. The most important thing is to restart your design on the, on the next fold with a very recognizable part of your pattern. So essentially, I would just come right out of here and I would immediately start one of these. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if I was halfway into one of those down here, I would just essentially with the fold, shade it down to black and the eye will be fooled. It is uh, very simple. And I'll probably, maybe I can cover that in the PDF as well. Do, do, do. Although I did talk about it, if you look at last year, I think it may even have been in December, December or January of last year, right when I started the Patreon, I did this, um, I did a pattern on a tiny dwarf from Dark Sword on a border. And uh, I do give some tips in that PDF. Because uh, I continue the border, essentially, like it disappears and then she has some cape showing between her legs. So. Oh, I totally did this wrong. Uh oh, see, I messed up. Oh no, well that's easy. So I need both of both of these to go under, not over. So let me introduce. This is why I have all my colors open at once. Pick up some walnut. Remember, both of these strands have to go under. So this needs to be blocked in to make sure that that is evident. But yeah, no person on the planet is going to actually calculate like how much of this cloth has disappeared here. So you just pretty much make it up how you want to when it goes into capes, into, into the folds. All that matters is that you have recognizable parts of your pattern that show up here and you just lose a little bit of it down here. Nobody is, nobody's going to even care or it won't be inexact at all. Whatever you decide to do will be right. All right, and now I've got to go over, not under. So this guy has to go over. Oh, thanks for the gift, Planer. That gets us another one toward our next AMA. Thank you, Planer. Yeah, Nomad Zeke, if, we, uh, if you have an OT10, that's a good brush to do this with. The OT5 can do it too. All right, and we're gonna go over here, over. But yeah, detail brush for sure. And the Kalinsky is, the Kalinsky wins at this sort of stuff. I mean, you can do a lot with Taclon or synthetics, but in my opinion, if you want a really fine narrow tip that really can hit these tiny lines, I think the Kalinsky wins. So I'm getting my diamonds going on there. So that's kind of fun. Yay, diamonds. So yeah, and I don't mind that this one's a little squished because I've got a fold here. So that's going to imply that it's just squished because of the way the cloth is bending. And this part of cloth is actually bulging out and very level. So it's good that I got the basic uh, shape very sharp there. Um, and I'll go through and kind of tune this. You know, if I want my white a little more solid here. Because you do want the white pretty solid, what you're doing is underpainting so that when I put the NMM color over the top of this, it's going to stand out because it's got a dark 
line around it, and then it's got the white center. So the NMM gold color is going to show over the white, and it's going to fade over the black, or the walnut, rather. And I usually would not use pure black for outlining. Walnut is dark enough, and it's more of a natural color. Okay. So let's see here. I think... Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I guess I could do one down here. I could do a fold one, show you kind of how to do that part of the fold. Now here it's going to get interrupted by these, these um, all of these little ragged bits here, right? It's better, if you're doing a sort of border, it can be a lot easier if you choose a cloak like Sir Malcolm's where it's intact. Um, then if you choose something like this, that's all broken up on the bottom, but it really doesn't matter because you're just going to do your pattern and you're going to kind of judge like, okay, where's the best area to put my pattern that isn't going to interrupt it. Cause really here, this area, you'd want it to be like this area of the pattern. So you might even just start out with that. You might even start out with the two doing your two bars like that. And then immediately going into your pattern on this side, let's see here. I want to start with the bottom one because this lets you do the pattern in a prominent place. Oh, I got a little, ob little oblong there. So now I'm going to fix this. I'm actually going to shorten it and make it taller and more steep here. Remember, we're just sketching, so it's okay to be rough. Let me block that in with my, oh, and by the way, this is 9057 Ashen Blue. Uh, it is the highlight for the Templar Blue Triad, which is one of my favorite softer blues. It's a great, uh, I use it a lot for like Sky Earth NMM because I think it's a really convincing sky color. Oop, here. Oh no, I'm throwing paint on the ground, yeek. I think that was my walnut brown. I might need to go after it. Um, but yeah, ashen blue is a fantastic color. 9057. It's that pretty, pretty blue. Boop. Yeah, ashen and templar, I really, really like it. So we're just going to paint over our uh, incorrect thingies. Kind of make a judgment call over here about how tall I want that because it's not as tall over there. But again, you could get away with a lot because cloth stretches and distorts designs. So mostly I'm just looking for a nice square. Yeah, that works. A nice square so that I can make sure that the pattern still shows up. So I'm not even caring what happens over here at all. I'm just like, okay, where's the most convenient place to put my design? Because I can certainly darken this down enough to imply that you're losing some of the pattern here. And then anything I do looks correct. Doesn't matter. I actually have a model like this. It's uh, that I'm going to have to do this on big time. It's the, uh, used to be, what was the name of those models? Dang it. I can never remember the name of the company. It went out of, uh, went out of business and a lot of the sculpts got picked up by other other companies, but there's a, a cat dude who looks kind of like a Khajiit from uh, Skyrim, and he's got a turban on. So if I do any freehand on that turban, it's all wrapping around itself and all that. That's going to have to be very much an implied pattern. You're never going to be able to duplicate what exactly would go on there. So speaking of going out of business, and did you... Uh... See, Ed was talking about testers yesterday. Oh, really? Apparently, testers is going out of business. They, they've been making some not great business decisions, so that does not surprise me entirely. It's sad because they're kind of been a, you know, a foundation of the, the modeling and hobby um, empire for a long time. But it uh, does not surprise me. It's because they never really kept up with the times. And I think they lost sight of who their audience was also. Um, I noticed they tried to come out with an acrylic paint line, but they were still using the glass bottles and they, it was kind of obvious they didn't know like who their clientele was. 
as far as the paint itself. So I think they they just never grokked the whole miniatures community thing. That's a little bit high. I'm going to block that out. Um, and they were still in the hobby car kind of thing. And so they failed to pick up on a new uh, community that they could have embraced, is my opinion. Because they tried to get more into figures. Um, they had the license to do Song of Ice and Fire stuff for George R. R. Martin. But... I think they were sold halfway through it and the new guy didn't see why they would bother with it or whatever. So those miniatures never came out. Yeah, dull coat. Exactly. I guess if we need, uh, if we need dull coat, we better pick it up now, huh guys? Oh God, don't cause a rush on dull coat. <laughs> Corhax, hello and welcome to the hobby. Um, no, I think... Oh, oh okay. yeah. Hey, how you doing, Corhax? Yeah, you I, are. I think it's likely, Anne, though, yeah. that someone picks up their product line. I hope and, so. And uh, we don't actually see a, a, a dip in production of it. We just see a change on the can of the name. Yeah, I hope so, because Dull Coat really is a unique product and one that's really useful to miniatures painters. Um, so, Corhax, uh, I would say a palette. You can choose between, they've got... Um, wet palette or the, with the traditional well palette that I've got here. It's actually really large. Um, I love this because it has smaller wells. And the advantage of smaller wells is that when you put like six drops of paint in there plus water, your paint stays wet a long time because you've got minimal surface area exposed to the air. Uh, you, the wet palette is more like a sponge with a sheet of, say, parchment paper over it. Um, that the water from the sponge, which you wet, uh, seeps up through the paper and keeps your paint wet, but it also gives you less control over how thin your paint is, right? So if you need a thin paint at a precise consistency, for a wet palette, you're going to have to mix it pretty much every brushful. Um, so it depends on your style. A lot of people really like the wet palette because they work with less precision and they're a little bit more artsy, um, and they like being able to like spot mix colors on the fly. Uh, Whereas I'm a bit more of a control freak, so I like my paint consistency to say stay correct uh, for what I'm doing. So palettes. Palettes is like the biggest thing to think about. You can start with the cheaper Taclon brushes, but sable brushes are where it's at when you start doing details. So if you notice that your brushes just aren't fine enough to hit some of the details, you could look at picking up a sable. Uh, the best quality sable, the grade one and two, is called Kalinsky, and they will all say Kalinsky, like this one does, on its barrel. If it does not say Kalinsky, it is not a grade one or two sable. Um, and they pretty much keep, as you can see, an amazing tip, razor sharp. This one's been in use for a while, many months now, um, and uh, still keeps a perfect tip. Unlike the Taclon brushes, which are plastic bristles, actually, and are getting better and better, but will still bend and fray a bit at the tip because they're just plastic, so they wear. Um, they wear that particular way. So I'd say brushes and palette are your most, uh, your first investments. Um, paints, of course, I'm going to recommend Reaper because I created the Reaper Master Series paint line. So I'm definitely biased there. But what I typically will say is pick up a couple of paints from every line that you're interested in and practice using them. And note the differences in consistency um, and how they thin, especially. That's where most of the, the differences are going to be. You're going to notice that Reaper does not necessarily cover in the first coat. You may need two coats, but when you're going to do washes or other thinned paint consistencies, Reaper is by far the steadiest and does not fall out of solution. So Reaper is made for thinned applications because uh, that's mostly what you're doing. The only time you use a thick coat of paint is on your base coat. Everything else you do with miniature painting is thinning your paint. Also, there's a link in a uh, couple of links in chat there to your palette as well as the brush you're using. Yep. Yeah. And essentially what it comes down to um, is if you feel like you're going to stay in the hobby for a while, then you can ex do the expensive brush, right? If you're just checking out the hobby and you're still not sure if you're really going to like enjoy it or whether you want to invest a lot in it, um, then you can start out with Taclon brushes. Absolutely. Um, but if you feel like, uh, you, however, this palette is a great buy because it's under 10 bucks and it's more with shipping, but, um, but I mean, as long as you don't drop it on concrete, you're going to be fine. It, they, they actually travel well. I usually pack mine in my luggage if I'm traveling and painting. 
Um, a funny story about dropping one on concrete. Uh, I dropped Collins's on concrete, oh, no. and it just bounced back. Wow, nice. It must have, it must have not, not hit a uh, key point. I've had a couple of them shatter. And they don't shatter, they, they shear. So they'll, just, they'll, they'll break in big chunks, which is nice. Um, not in fine But you could glue it back together, couldn't you, if you wanted to? You could. You could epoxy it back together. But the cracks are probably not going to be good. I mean, paint will slowly seep down into those. You won't be able to clean them perfectly anymore. Whereas with these porcelain ones, you can clean them exactly. If you get a palette that is plastic or, or metal, um, you could get a well palette that's plastic or metal, but you won't be able to clean it up. Uh, it, it, may, it may be the first time, but after that, the more you scour it out, the more the paint is going to cling. So you're never going to get it as shiny and clean. I personally am kind of a, you know, silly and anal about my palette being shiny and clean when I start a project. So for me, I want the porcelain because it can be cleaned up so easily. Just throw it in the sink with some hot water and either some simple green sprayed in or some 409 or any kitchen cleanser, really. And uh, you're, you're golden. All right, let's see here. Now we got to do another little diamond. And so here, I don't, I'm probably not going to be able to get the whole fold. Maybe I can. We'll see. And I'm just probably going to paint right over this little divot, and I'll go back and shade in this little divot. But I think I can get it all in, more or less. I may need to enlarge it just a little bit. And this is actually very fortuitous, my placement here, because I'm able to do two complete triangles or diamonds. Um, where they ought to be, and, and uh, that means that the pattern is definitely going to be evident. That's the only thing in, in freehand borders as far as when you run into folds. All you need is for your pattern to still be evident. It's easily recognizable. So now when I go into this fold, I'm just going to go down as far as my brush can reach. So boom and boom, and it can be kind of mucky. I don't even need it to be like great as far as uh, being clean. And then it's just going to disappear into the fold. And on this other side, if I just wanted to start with half of a diamond, I could. Or if I wanted to just start with a whole new diamond, I could. Um, it's I would probably start with a new diamond as close to the fold as I could because then it would imply that we didn't really lose a whole lot down here. Um, so, but again, you're not looking for perfection. Uh, yeah, Model Master paints. Well, you could always try bringing navy red uh, to like a ReaperCon and saying, hey, can you make this, you know? Or we could show you a color that's really close. Yeah, exactly, Bandar, you've got it, exactly. Dirty palettes bother me too. I had to, I grew up with them as a kid and it was frustrating. I was doing canvas painting at the time. Um, I really hated it, how I couldn't clean them. So once I discovered porcelain palettes, there was no going back for me because I am definitely a well palette user. I'm going to mix some of my walnut into my ashen blue to make a shadow for this uh, bottom of the cape. I'm just going to add a little bit of ashen blue so that we see a little bit of that color. Nomad Zeke, uh, perfection. perfectionism is not the enemy of the bad. It is the enemy of the good. It keeps you from, from doing good work. Um, it's really the enemy of getting anything done, too. Do not be perfect. Aim for something you are happy with. Try to be happy with less than perfection because there is no such thing. This whole attitude in our uh, society about aiming for perfection is ridiculous. Or if you're going to aim for perfection... Always keep in mind that it's a unicorn and you're not going to find it. And then when you get, you know, to somewhere where you're very happy, just stop. And let yourself be happy with less than perfection. Just going to block in some of these little divots in the cape. Using my shadow color. And uh, if you didn't know, walnut makes an excellent shadow color for almost any... Almost anything except yellow, I'd say. Um, so, like, mixing your base coat color with walnut will usually give you a very realistic shadow color. One second. There, then it looks properly like it's kind of frayed. There we are. Yeah, aim for competency. Competency is good. 
No Man's Inc., you should never, ever, 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 ever think of yourself as a screw-up. Um, things that you think make their way into your mouth, and then the things that you say reinforce your thoughts in your brain, and then you really are screw-up. And you've talked yourself into it. So that's the, the worst thing that you could possibly do. You have to be nice to yourself. Like, come on, nobody else is going to be as nice to you as you are capable of being. So be nice to yourself and say, you know what? This was a really good try. I bet we'll do better next time. And if you're a masochist, disregard all. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like, just keep trying for, for, keep trying for like what you, your goal, right? Make a goal and set your goals realistically. It's much more effective than trying to be perfect. When I go out doing this sort of freehand thing, I mean, actually, if you're on my Patreon, you can check out, uh, I did a, a video on how I set up the freehand for my crystal brush entry last year. I think it's earlier. It's like March. No, yeah, February or March of last year. You can look back in the posts. I think it's a $10 level. But um, you'll see that I actually, I post how I did it in the video, and then I put a picture up um, of how I adjusted it. So... You can shoot for the moon. Just be ready to, like, make adjustments to make it nicer. Don't expect to get it all done in one big, you know, perfect sweep. It's not going to happen. It doesn't even happen for me. And I've been doing freehand for ages. And I come from a 2D art background where I've been drawing for ages. So, gotta be good to yourself. Allow for learning. Yeah, see, HM Road Dog's got it. He's striving for per perfection, drove you out of mini painting. Exactly. Yeah, we are our own worst critics. You're right, Melinda. And it's so wrong to do that because, really, you know, you got to depend on yourself to be nice to yourself. Like, you can't say everybody else is, like, you know, all too ready to tell you how you're failing. So, yeah, yeah, Robin. Or maybe, you know, you learn what to do only different, you know? Yeah. Yeah, MG Photo, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm with that on the relationship front. <laughs> Yes, that happy little mistake is now a cloud. Exactly. Yes, course correction burns. Exactly, Riot. On the nose. Yeah, and Bob Ross had it right. I mean... Yes, exactly. Sentimental Mini's got it in one, too. The tiny errors on here, like most people, once I've got it all polished up, nobody's going to even notice. They're all just going to say, oh my god, the tiny boxes, the tiny diamonds. That's what you want. And freehand is also, speaking of, speaking of distractions, freehand, even poor freehand, is a great distraction if your blending is not perfect. Uh, because everybody's eyes will be drawn to the detail. That's the way that the human brain is wired and the eyes are wired, uh, is that we are drawn to clusters of detail. So essentially, by putting freehand onto the back of a cape, if you had trouble like blending some of the broad areas, you are, you are putting a, hey, look over here, don't look at my blending flag up. And it works. <laughs> All right, I need to put that in and that in. Remember where my over and unders are. So yeah, and we're just gonna we're just gonna end up. And it doesn't matter that I'm a loose part of the design over here. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I'm probably I may this isn't as bad as this, but I could just start here again uh, with a double line and then go into diamonds on both sides, and it would probably work fine, because. People are just going to assume that there's a diamond down in here that they can't see. Especially if you're smart and you go down here and you kind of suggest a tiny little triangle. Let's see if I can show that. Here, let me turn on my turn on my light thing. So if you go down there and you see where I put the dot, if you suggest that there's a tiny little buried triangle down here or diamond, and then you bring your, your two, uh, two strands up, you know, you could probably get away with just starting a diamond somewhere, somewhere, uh, wherever, right? And here we're going to shadow. So I probably would block this in with a shadow to begin with. And then I would just do my diamond pattern. I draw right over that. And then I just, you know, kind of shade it out where this little divot is, because that's the way that it would really be. And that would make it more realistic because you'd see the pattern getting interrupted by holes in the cape. Actually, Bandar, I, I used to do that precisely for that reason. 
Um, I wanted to get to the point where I could blow one of my models up to about 600 pixels wide and not see brush strokes in my blending. And so doing that, essentially, I didn't get critical about it, but I got essentially what the photographs allowed me to do was to see when my blending was too rough. And then I would go back in and I would blend that part of the cape until it was better. And so what that did is essentially enabled me to perfect super smooth blending um, because I came into it and it's all mental attitude. So don't be self-critical. Say, okay, this is a tool. Where do I need to get better blending? Where do I need to get better at this? Or what part do I need to touch up? Because a lot of times you're not going to see it when you're working on it, but the camera is going to show you and you're going to be like, oh, that eyeball is actually not great. But all I need to do is put a little dark, dark line right there or a little spot of white. And so think of the camera as your friend because it shows you details uh, more readily that you can then fix. Oh, a smooth coat of yellow. Are you over white, Riot? Always go over white when you are trying to get a smooth coat of any yellow. And I also, ha I did a video not long ago about yellow and how to do it. Go watch it. <laughs> yeah, as frustrating as it is, you do like when the camera reveals stuff you need to fix. Exactly, sentimental's on it. You are like on point today, sentimental. You and I are seeing eye to eye. Yeah, over white. Good, Riot. What yellow are you using? Photo show you where a problem is. You can tell, yeah, when you can tell something's wrong but not right. Yeah, and why? And another way to do that is to do the old 2D art trick and look at, take a picture and then look at it upside down. Uh, and that will almost always, if it's a, a question of an irregularity or a difference in scale or something weird, that will show it to you. So, pro acryl yellow. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, not familiar with the Proacquil. Is that a um, airbrush line, or is it a? Where's it from? You might try mixing in some yellow ochre to it. Yes, exactly. Sarduki, listen to HM Road Dog. If you're if you're putting paint on a mini with a brush, you're a painter. And one might add, with an airbrush, you're a painter. Yes, and with intentionality just means pay attention to what you're doing. What is your paint consistency? How are you applying it? What's your air pressure if you're using airbrush? Um, yes, welcome to Reaper Twitch, new people. Yeah, we have uh, we have a Discord um, also. And I'm going to be doing an AMA based on questions left for me on that Discord in the questionable AM channel. We'll be scheduling that. I was thinking about tomorrow, but now I think I want to finish this uh, freehand stuff tomorrow. So... I think that maybe it'll be next week. Maybe Monday. Maybe I'll do it from home. Maybe we'll kick back and do some stuff. So, and if you're going to wipe out, if at any point you think you're going to wipe out your uh, your white, wipe it out on the top part of the, if you like, if you think your white is going to wipe out your walnut line here, uh, try to make it on the top part rather than the bottom because the bottom is where uh, any embroidery or stuff would cast, ca ugh, cast a very slight shadow. So it's better if you must have only one line around your white, it's better to have the bottom line. Your bottom line must stay awesome. And you can go back in and put it in. There we go. I lost a little bit up here. There we are. All right, I think we're getting, yeah, it's noon. Super. <laughs> yes, you are good, Melon. You're so mean. How do we even deal with you? Uh, oh, right, 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 Creature Caster. I, I do have some Creature Caster paint. Um, I also, I found that when I thinned it, it uh, went out of solution very readily. Um, so maybe try shooting it a little thicker or, or putting it on just a little bit thicker. Um, their metallics are nice. I like the, I like a lot of their metallic colors. They have some really unusual ones. I want to play with them a little bit more. But yeah, I got, the, I got a couple bottles last year at Adepticon. Oh no, Everlina, I'm so sorry to hear that about Mo Mocha. That's difficult. I'm going to hit that with Kiri some of the sometime soon cuz Kiri's over 12. It is really hard. Yeah, Skeleton Key is an awesome color. All right. I think we're going to call it there. Um we will uh we'll continue this tomorrow. 
And I'll start putting together the PDF um, for my Patreon on a step-by-step -step kind of on this. And I'll show you guys a different design too that you could do. Um, and we'll, uh, we will just continue uh, to do awesome things. So tomorrow I'll start blocking in some gold. Uh, and maybe we'll see if I can, to take pictures, I'll do a couple more diamonds here. So that'll be my project for today. I hope that you all enjoyed this. Let's go back to F2. There we are. Here's Anne at home. So yeah, there we are. And we managed to get through it. Justin, are you awake? <laughs> yes, I am. All right, cool. Oh, I forgot to put my earplug in. So you, it's a good thing you didn't talk much today. <laughs> so you would, you would echo. Um, so yes, if Justin was echoing, uh, many, many apologies, people. Um, all right, super, super, super. Oh, hi, Bryce. Good to see you. I'm glad you like the pattern. Yeah, I decided for some reason I wanted to do crazy not work today. Why not, right? I can do anything I want in my stream. Woohoo! Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, sub, another sub. We're already three three toward our next four toward us our next AMA. Uh four, yes. Yay. Awesome. Yeah, you guys have a great day. And I hope you new people continue to show up. I stream uh, at eleven AM Central on a Monday through Thursday, and pretty soon I'm gonna be relocating and I may add a Friday onto that. I have to see how the schedule goes. Um, but I'm, I'm strongly thinking about it. Uh, so then we could, you can have Anne on stream with random mini painting tips Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Um, there will be a cessation of service while I am moving. We'll talk more about that when we get closer to it. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. We also have a couple of shows. We have Miniatures Monday at three with a different painter, Josh, Mini Painting Studios, I think is his uh, call sign. And then uh, yeah. we normally have uh, today, I'm on back, back on at three today, painting Dance of Death, trying to get it done before I move. Um, and then uh, I think normally Sadie is on tomorrow with painting platinum, but she's going to be off because we're all getting sick here at Reaper. Um, and she has to be careful about that. So I don't know. Are we doing the 6 p.m. shows still? Uh, I, don't, I don't see why not. It's yeah. it's on until it's not, I guess. Okay. It's on until it's not. So watch our social media. Since Reaper is get, since a lot of people at Reaper are getting sick, keep an eye on our Twitter, guys, and our, uh, our social media to make sure you know about any cancellations. Um, but I should be good for tomorrow, and we will continue our network. Uh, we'll put some NMM Gold uh, detailing inside of that network tomorrow. All right, let's make sure we got everything. You were busy absorbing things. Good, Twisted Oma. Good. Yay, resubs. We love that. Super. I'm glad you guys really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, as safe as it is, I don't think we've got coronavirus melon, but we do have a lot of like spring spring illness, apparently, and people are just oh, being yeah. careful. Um, I mean, we normally get a lot of outages with people getting sick in the spring because the temperature. I mean, we went from, what, 40 degrees last week to 84 today? <laughs> so people yeah. are going to get sick. Um, my right eye is watering right now because I didn't take my allergy medication. So oh, it's, dear. Just, Yikes. it's just a mix of, you know, all kinds. of. Yeah, exactly. And it's springtime. So all the pollen and everything is uh, springing into action for those who are sensitive to it. So, yeah, I'm still going to be a paint club this week. I mean, I don't want to miss one of my few remaining paint clubs. We may be a little uh, low on attendance this week if people are really like scared of the virus and all that. But as far as I know, we are open until the bosses tell, say that, no, we don't want, you know, we want to close down the store. We want to close down paint club. Um, then I think we're, we're pretty good, but it's such a small gathering. I mean, paint club is usually between 12 and 16 people uh, or even less on a, on a slow day. And the weather's been so nice. It may be a slow day anyway. So absolutely yeah wonderful texas yeah exactly yeah exactly striding aragorn there's there's crap going around so it's not it's not necessarily coronavirus it's just springtime <laughs> you're in texas all righty yeah paint club's on for now again keep an eye on our twitter i can always tell john to tweet if a paint club is going to be canceled and uh, i should post it up on reaper paint club on facebook as well um so yeah yeah, if you're not well or you think that, you know, you've been around people who are seriously not well, then just make the, the good choice and stay away. Otherwise, we will see you. All righty. Uh, do we have a raid, right, a raid ready? Yes, we do. Who we are, are we raiding? raiding Dice. Dice Yay. Super. Yeah, no problem, Anki. Um, oh, yeah, we should put it on the Discord, too. You're right. I'm sure, I'm sure John will, will, uh, will blurb everything on the uh, Discord and stuff. So, all right. 
Thanks, everybody. Have yeah, a wonderful day. Out. Are we ready? Are we ready to rain? I'm going to go to my, my end screen. Here's our fade. Bye, guys. Have a great day. See you guys.